What's up guys, Andrew here for Simply Sports. Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna kickstart this off with our new Team Fit series, which is gonna be a combination of prospect evaluations from the 2020 class, where we're gonna look at some roles and production of these uh, some of the players on their new team. So we're gonna start with Ross Blacklock. Blacklock declared as a redshirt junior after starting for two years at TCU, missing 2018 with an Achilles injury. Compared to Neville Gallimore, he had similar raw statistical production in the same conference he was about 15 pounds lighter than Gallimore, and he tested worse at the combine. But Blacklock ended up at 29th overall on my final board, and he, he was a bit of a late riser. Shot up my board the more I kept watching him and realizing what he could be at the next level. So for context, TCU often ran a light 33-man front on obvious passing downs, dropping eight into coverage with Blacklock as a zero tech right over the center. So he was doubled on a lot of these situations, but when he could get one-on-one -on -one reps in the passing game, he, he was very disruptive because of his initial quickness, his balance, and his flexibility. He's able to play through half a man and really give some centers and guards problems when he's one-on-one. -on -one. You see in this rep, he's able to disengage these hands really quickly and he's flexible enough and athletic enough to corner and finish for the sack. And I think he's a lot more effective when he's lined up as a one tech shaded over, over the center. Because as you see in this rep, the center is going to have to laterally move to block him. But Blacklock is so initially quick that he can just fire out and even play through that initial contact. So the Houston Texans lost DJ Reader, their nose tackle, one of the best nose tackles in the NFL in the run game in free agency this offseason, and they're really going to need Blacklock to step in day one and at least attempt to replace some of that production. But they're completely different molds of players. As you can see, Reader is more of that two-gapping mold. He's a hulking defensive lineman. So they approach double teams differently, and you're going to want them to operate as such because Blacklock is... The way that he deals with double teams is he's going right through them. He's getting between the double instead. And this is where you're going to see, in combination with everything else that I've I've already talked about, Blacklock has this one, one trait that kind of separates him from a lot of other three technique defensive tackles. I don't know how to completely explain it, but... He's essentially able to maintain both balance and explosiveness while playing from an extremely low position. And he essentially creates his own leverage. And you're going to really see it in this rep right here. You know, most guys would be completely knocked off balance by that hit. He's able to play underneath offensive linemen and retain that balance. And Reader doesn't really show any of this balance or, or lateral mobility. He, he really ended up on the ground in a lot of the reps that I saw when he was asked to either twist or stunt, which the Houston Texans front really kind of needed to do because they, they just could not generate pressure on their own, especially against good O-line units. Um, against bad O-line units, Houston actually could generate a rush. The, in, the, in three games against the Jaguars and the Chargers, they had 13 sacks and 12-plus pressures in each game, which is about half their sacks for the total season. But when you look at their production against good all lines in five regular season games against the Saints, Chiefs, two games against the Colts and the Raiders, they only had four sacks and only 12 pressures one time, which came against the Colts in week seven, during which J.J. Watt had eight of them on his own. And these were all games with like normal game flow and uh, relatively close games where you had your fair share of obvious passing situations. In a lot of these reps, they had to move J.J. Watt over the guard to get some favorable matchups and just some sort of interior rush. So by adding Ross Blacklock to the mix uh, in the defensive line group, the Texans are really going to be able to get one of their uh, one of their worst players off the field, and Angelo Blackson, who had two pressures and 425 snaps and actually started for the Texans in 2019. And as the backside defensive tackle on this play, DeMar Dotson, the right tackle for the Buccaneers, is actually going to have to come over to try to reach block him. And there, there is an opening lane for for a, a tackle for loss opportunity for Blackson, but he's just not the same caliber of athlete that Ross Blacklock is. And even though uh, this play goes for a big explosive run, and these plays aren't usually going to break off like this, but 
there's a lot of plays on, uh, that Blackson just can't make from, from a backside perspective that Blacklock can. But I think that Ross Blacklock can really be a problem at the next level on the front side of run plays too because he's got that get off and initial quickness. But for 290 pounds, he's got surprising play strength. And then this is where you see that, that special ability for him to really explode out from that low position. He, he's not going to make this play, but he actually does get held, basically tackled. And when he has to get reached to the outside, he's able to really be disruptive. And even if it's not a tackle for loss, he's making a, he's making plays outside the numbers on tape. So considering that the Houston Texans selected Ross Blacklock with their first overall selection at 40 overall in the 2020 draft, I think they're expecting a lot from him early to really kind of shore up and really add a, a dynamic presence to this interior defensive line of the Houston Texans that really needs it. I, I think he's a player that's going to be really versatile on stunts. I think you can actually line him up at nose if you want to in some of those sub-package formations on, on late downs when you want to try to create your own pressure. But I think he's going to be a player that plays upwards of 50% of the snaps, which really is a lot for the rookie, for, for a rookie coming in. But... I don't think he he has the luxury of playing a smaller percentage of the snaps like some like Raekwon Davis for the Dolphins is. And it's always hard to project overall defensive tackle statistics. It's not really the it's not really a sexy position for sack totals and that type of stuff, but I think the impact is going to be underrated uh, for Ross Blacklock even in year 1 and and definitely in years 2 and 3 as as a big part, as a big building block for this defensive line.